Buenos nachos and welcome back to the channel. This video is a continuation of our refurbishment of the Philips Xbox drive. So in this video, we're gonna be recapping the PCB of this drive. First thing we have to do is we have to remove all of the connectors, which would be all these FFC cables, ribbons, connectors, whatever you wanna call them. All right, so we've zoomed in and now you're gonna to wanna to remove a couple of these latches. See if I can do this without them all busting on us. usually a lot easier when you're not wearing gloves. We do have some connectors right here that are soldered on, but I think we're gonna attempt to do this work without desoldering those wires. A little bit more difficult, a little bit more challenging, but I think we can get it done. It's not like we can't resolder them anyway, so. All right, so it does look like we have a decent amount of capacitors that we're gonna have to replace on this board. It looks like we probably have about 10 capacitors to replace on this thing. We're gonna be using a capacitor kit from Console 5. Always get their capacitor kits. They're pretty high quality. We don't carry these, so I don't have a choice. So we have five 16 volt, 100 microfarad capacitors to replace. We're gonna replace those first. We're gonna replace the same type of capacitors all at the same time make it a little bit easier for us. Kind of tempted to desolder these wires now because I fear they're gonna get in my way. I don't know that I wanna do that. So it looks like four of the capacitors of the five are right over here and then we have one more right over here. So let's go ahead and start with this one. We're gonna get our vacuum going, of course. And it looks like the previous residents of this table has set our temperature to 420. Shout outs to all of our 420 enjoyers out there. <laughs> so I guess that's what we're gonna roll with. And in case you're wondering, we're using the T15D24 soldering iron tip. First things first, let's go ahead and see what our orientation is on this capacitor. It looks like the manufacturer has noted down the orientation, so we should be set. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and first add some solder to the capacitor area right here. And we'll just go ahead and pull this capacitor through. And it came out just like that. The next capacitor is right over here. And it came right out. Uh, it's tough to say, but it looks like it could have been leaking a tad. We'll know once we get these under the microscope, if I remember. We have to be careful with the removal of these because some of these capacitors do look the same as some of the other ones. Don't want to make the mistake of not knowing what you're removing, and then you place the wrong capacitor in the wrong spot. That was probably a scam call. This one's a little bit more difficult to remove. That's four of them. And it looks like we have one more to go. Looks like I added solder to the wrong one. All right. All right, so we have our five 16 volt, 100 microfarad capacitors removed. So let's go ahead and clean up these solder joints. We're gonna continue our voyage into the world of desoldering these holes. Hopefully they all desolder without too much effort. So far, so good. I think we have one more down here at the bottom. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna fit the new capacitors into the spots that the old capacitors used to be in. That way we don't get confused with which ones we've replaced and still need to replace. Let's go ahead and take these out of this roll here or this uh, tape system. All right, you'll of course want to pay attention to polarity. We have our negative on the left hand side in this case. We'll just fold over the legs real quick. That way we can temporarily anchor these down and you just repeat that process four more times. All right, so those capacitors are anchored down. Now we can proceed to removing the remainder. So let's go ahead and remove the capacitor over here next to this connector. We'll of course be adding some good old fashioned solder to it.
find that it makes it easier to remove and as you can tell it just fell out on its own and this capacitor happens to be a 33 microfarad 25 volt so let's go ahead and grab one of those let's go ahead and desolder let's go ahead and run that one through And just fold the legs over. Be careful with those wires or you may end up having to do a little bit of resoldering. Now we may as well hunt down the other 33 microfarad 25 volt capacitor. Uh, let's see, that was a green looking one, so I can only assume it's gonna be this one right here. So we'll go ahead and add some solder to that and maybe we'll get lucky and it'll just fall right through like the other one did. I'm thinking it didn't, I think it's holding, nope, it did fall through, nice. So 33 microfarad, 25 voltage. Let's go ahead and desolder that area. And you'll of course install that in here, paying attention to polarity. All right, we don't have too many more caps to go. I think we have a total of three. Let's see which one this ends up being when we desolder it. All right, so the solder holes are cleaned up. Amazingly enough, this capacitor has hung on for dear life. Very surprised that it has, but it did. Ah, came right up. Mm -hmm. Thought for sure I was gonna have to use a soldering iron. So this one right here is a 10 microfarad, 16 volt. It's looking like we probably have two of those. So let's place that one in here, fold over those legs. All right, and we have two more capacitors to go from the looks of it. If I had to guess, I'd say this capacitor is also the same value. And of course, once again, it did not fall out on its own, but it was just enough to where it can be removed without too many difficulties. Let's go ahead and desolder the residual solder in this area. Pretty neat, desoldered two in one go. We'll go ahead and verify, this is a 10 microfarad 16 volt. Go ahead and replace it with the same thing. All right, we have one final capacitor to go, which I believe is a 47 microfarad 16 volt. And that one is located right here. like we've built up quite the collection of disabled capacitors right here. All right, let's go ahead and put this new capacitor through. There we go. It always helps you when the manufacturer gives you a bit of a hint on the polarity of the capacitors, and if not, you can always take a picture beforehand. That way you know how everything was supposed to be. Next is to solder up all of the capacitor legs. quite the mess in here, so we'll see what we can do. Probably adding just a tad bit too much solder.
if I'm not mistaken, this is our final one to solder up. Now we can cut off the leads. And you're not being too rough when you're cutting these. And just make sure you're careful if you have some uh, nippers, as they're called, uh, that if your tip on them is uh, pretty sharp, you know, you can cut some vias or traces or whatever. So make sure you're careful. That one did not cut properly at all. All right, and we're just gonna blast through cutting these. Of course, the next thing to do is to clean up all of the spent flux that's on this board with some good old-fashioned alcohol. Use a toothbrush or a metal brush like I've been using in my previous videos. Just give it a nice clean. Make sure you don't have any bridge solder joints. Make sure you don't have any loose solder in any areas that shouldn't have any extra solder. So you don't want to power on a good drive, or at least it uh, is supposed to be good unless you're testing out a theory as to whether it's capacitors causing you issues. Uh, one final thing you can do is, of course, make sure the polarity is correct on all of the capacitors before you power it up in the Xbox. You don't want to have things explode. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to check out the polarity on all these first. Yeah, it looks good to me. All right, we'll go ahead and get this thing reassembled and plop it on over into the Xbox. I almost forgot. We were going to check some of these capacitors to see if they were indeed leaking. Yeah, we probably had just that one leaking from what I'm able to... Well, we had... Actually, it looks like we may have had a couple that were leaking. And unless it's flux residue, I think we had a few of these capacitors actually leaking. Well, let's go ahead and plug this thing into the Xbox and make sure it still works. All right, the moment of truth. Drive doesn't sound like it's working as hard as it was prior. Fairly quick loading, though that's probably placebo. If you found this video helpful or useful, please remember to leave us a like and subscribe, and thanks for watching. Until next time.